Good evening, good evening everybody. Welcome to the live Facebook, that's right. And we are on the 11th of August, that's right. Now, uh, we are still early in the stage ball. We are waiting for a few more people to arrive and I uh, would appreciate if you could uh, do the usual sharing of our live FB tonight. And definitely tonight we'll be talking about an event that happened two weeks ago. I think it's also a good time that we all look into what has happened in here. I'll be coming with you with my honest opinion uh, on the uh, market. And I do know that some people did come from the Inari webinar. That's right, that was organized by Raku Ten. I'm sure he has a lot of good news to share with everybody. And the market is hot, hot, hot. Now do remember, every time when it's hot, 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 remember, Profit taking is very, very common here. Okay, so something that you all must take note of this uh, this evening here. So while we are waiting for uh, more people to come in, I think tonight will be very, very specific to certain people who like the Hong Kong and U uh, Hong Kong and China market. That's right. Now Hong Kong and China market is predominantly a lot of uh, Chinese uh, will be really interested in this. Uh, group here so we just wait for a few more minutes and then we will start for much of today in here all right okay we we'll appreciate if you could share this in your group so more people can uh, uh, benefit from our talk that we have so far Okay. All right, so let's get started right now. Been too late. Welcome, welcome to our live web uh, live video of uh, Facebook tonight at the fb.com Martin T. F. Wong. I'm your host tonight and also speaker for tonight's uh, talk in here and we're going to be touching on on China and Hong Kong market. I think last week many of you knew uh, what has happened and transpired within the Chinese market especially in the Hong Kong and what we have seen so far. So I'm just going to break it down and to see whether we have and opportunity that's right for either for short term and for long term and thank you again for all your support uh, coming in tonight in here for those of you who are first time just type in there with your first time but i do see a lot of you are uh, our regular supporters as well as top fans in here and definitely there's some opportunity in here and let me just break it down for you so far that we have in here so thank you thank you again for sharing this video that we have in here so of course uh, this is our telegram chat room and also how we communicate to you for all our video so if not do join us for this uh, coming talk here and uh, do sign up and share this with your friend too and don't forget to subscribe subscribe to uh, our youtube all our video will be archived and it will remain there so you can always refer it back again in here and not to forget our smart roby apps uh, which is extended to the US market, S&P 500, SGX and KL and it provides all the trading idea and investing information for you so you can use it. If you have not downloaded, make sure you get a copy of this too. And every time when you share, you get 200, cop uh, 200 credit in here. Now let's take a look at what we have in the market so far that we've seen in here. So what you have, we have noticed right now, the KLSC market, the sector which is continued to really dominate mean continue to be uh, technology as you can see let me just bring up my pen here so you can see technology is actually getting a bit uh, uh, what we call taper off a bit but you can see other sectors what is really coming take note is the logistic continue to be up here so you can see technology is going to slow down so we will see a little bit of tapering off from the KLCI now and today for the first time also, we did see our market close above. I'm going to report to you also an update on the KLCI in here. Consumer is also moving up in here 
and the REITs is coming down. Now, it's quite interesting to see. Uh, today, we have the webinar and update from uh, Casey Lau, uh, one of the MD from Inari. I'm sure he would paint a very, very positive and rosy picture going forward with the 5G involvement in here. And also take note, every time when you see good news, huh, all right, I know you'll be very, very tempted to go and buy some more, but that's not always been the case. Always uh, move with caution. I think education is always best in here. All things being equal, we can see there is a movement in consumption and logistics. So take note of this one. REITs are going, tapering off, but the finance are coming back. So this is definitely a good thing when you compare to last week, finance are definitely moving back. So uh, that means our uh, we'll market, the KLCI, which predominantly 30% of it are moving. And again, you can also check this out on our Trade VSA Pro dashboard. That's the one you will get if you are a, a premium subscriber to them. So make sure you get to India. The other sectors continue to weaken is also healthcare, but I do think healthcare uh, just uh, short of today uh, around 5 p.m. we have the Hata Lega uh, coming back on that one here all right let's look at the market as presented as we can see uh, a host of news that was out here the KLCI Busa uh, foreign funds in here is available again to our uh, uh, plug in as well if you're one of our uh, uh, master class member definitely you can get it what has transpired is also this is actually a leading indicator now foreign funds continue to sell over the month of july we have only three occasion of uh, buying in here and that's why we see the market uh, really dip off the 150 in here but right now the selling has reduced where we hit this what we call a climatic. Now take note, every time when we have seen this kind of climatic, the market always move back and we're going to see this again. And then they probably have another one somewhere here. Then likelihood we'll see very, very positive foreign fund stores. That's the kind of trend that we are seeing. And again, this BUSA foreign fund flow is only available in our trade VSA package. And you can see it every day on basis in here. Now let's also look at our KLCI in here. And since the red Pentagon that we have on the 20th of June, this market continue to slide down and down again. We are also opening of what we call and something we will teach in our masterclass, the opening of the railway track. All right, the railway track, and this will be covered in there. If you have not uh, thought about it, you still have the chance this Friday is our uh, our August 5th, 13th, first day of our... So you can see in here, what we want to do is simply just wait for the green pentagon, okay? If you're a beginner, you want to wait for that green pentagon to come in and perhaps this will give you a chance for the market to move higher. Right now, the KLCI is registering around 1504 and uh, the volume around, no doubt about it, the support which is correct from last week is still holding up at 1500 level in here. So that is going to be, so breaking that 1500, we'll see more bearish tone coming in here. But so far that has been good. Okay. And now we have James in here. The video tone uh, is, uh, how about the rest? The rest is okay. Okay. Mm. Now let's also move on to our KLCI continue to weaken. As I said before, we are in the month where we have seen uh, right now a bearish, bearish, bearish. So we already have three months since May, June, July uh, uh, in the negative territory and August. All right, uh, let's hope it will rebound back. But usually September and October, it's also rebound. But one thing good is today, uh, the uh, the king has asked for the parliament to reconvene on the word of confidence. So we are coming to the end of a bottleneck, you know, where we can see some sort of development on the parliament side, which will, in my opinion, gives us a lot of clarity uh, going forward with the market in here. Uh, it's going to come. <laughs> the turn is going to come, but we just have to wait for it. As I said before, currently we are at minus 7% in here. And if the COVID cases continue to uh, rampant and uh, we are almost close to 21,000 in here, uh, that has to be brought down. But I do see that Salango and Kuala Lumpur being one of the highest 
in terms of vaccination. If that number comes down, and it should because it follows the trend that we see in many of the fully vaccinated country where we see one state the cases will drop a bit more but the other state that is not vaccinated will continue to uh, go a bit higher there. All right, so let's see. Uh, so also let's uh, move our uh, attention now to also on the US market in here. And finally, uh, last night we have the green Pentagon. That's right, we have the green Pentagon. So that is a go-go for the US market to break a bit higher. Now also take note, we have the 1 trillion uh, uh, bipartisan infrastructure plan or 1.1 trillion, which already been improved both from the House of Democrat uh, Democrat as well as Republican in here. So we will be seeing the continued very, very slow step of the US Dow Jones breaking higher. That's definitely a lot of opportunity if you compare to the Malaysian market. At the same time, there is news of about the Delta variant uh, event which is happening and uh, across the uh, states that is not vaccinated in US. So again, this does present a very good opportunity to buy more as I do see we are likely to see a little bit of rally and the November and December time will be the best time uh, this market will be. All this alternating going up, you can see we have a two bar reversal, definitely a two bar reversal, reversal, another two bar reversal. That simply tells you three events of two bar reversal, which means this market is really, really well supported, right? So in here, nothing can derail this US market going forward. What do you think, what I've just said? US market continue to go higher and we will see more market going up in here. Now, let's turn our attention right now to the Chinese and Hong Kong market after our regular updates that we have in here. Now, this has always been China a little uh, far uh, fetch from for many investors, especially those of you who are non-Chinese in here, you all generally will be focusing more on the US market. But for the Hong Kong and Chinese market, it is very particular, especially those who are uh, Chinese speaking, they tend to gravitate towards many of the trends that you see in Shanghai, Shenzhen and, and so forth. Of course, the last 20 years of China being a big boom, uh, being an uh, economic powerhouse as well as being uh, a military powerhouse, that has overshined and even taken many of the Western state. And now it, it is in par with the next super giant, which is the US in here. In many ways, I do think that China has already taken the US as a superpower. What do you think? Just type it in there. Let me know what you think. And uh, that is how I see this in here. But along the way, as it's grow through this tremendous growth over the last 20 years, unlike US, which has taken its time, China was on a, what we call a bullet train of growth. And uh, we can see many, many uh, uh, sacrifices and challenges that they overtook, especially in the COVID-19. And right now with the Delta variant breaking up in Nanjing, you could see the uh, Chinese government taking all the opportunity to keep this in play and maintain their economic growth, which is very important. And right now, I do think the Chinese citizens are more proud than ever compared to those who were born in the 80s, especially the new millennium generation. And they feel that Chinese is the best food going forward, especially through the recent uh, display of Olympic medal that they have won in the Chinese market as well. The next Olympic uh, uh, event and also winter and summer around in 2020. So that will put the, the Chinese, as you can see here, the golden dragon to be a proud owner of the next millennium and powerhouse in the US in here. But what's in store recently, as we can see, the Hong Kong market sink the most in the last 14 months as we see a lot of the tech stock after Chinese unleash a lot of this regulation. And we're going to go through point by point and where are all the opportunity that is presented in here. And as a result of all this regulatory Hang Seng index was, was down about 9.5%, Tencent, Tencent was down 43% for the Ohio, Alibaba, uh, Mituan, JD and DD. While the US market, as I said before, continued to go higher, how, why isn't the technology stock going in the same rate as it is? After all, there are more consumption, the more users, and China, as I said before, being a stronger GDP growth uh, long in here. If you look from the chart, uh, we were around the, just short of the 30,000, right? 30,000, and then that market after on this event where the regulatory, uh, regulatory came out and the Hang Seng dropped by 50 
fifteen percent. That's right, almost four thousand four hundred points in here in a span of less than. A month, and since then we have registered a new volume, climatic volume, which is I'm going to talk about the market bottoming in here, and then the market spring back in here. That it does represent a very, very good opportunity. But I'm going to unveil how you should play this market in here. All right. So next thing is I'm going to share with you in here. What do you see? Right. Right, this is a mad rush, right? Right. So a lot of people say that when we see that market crash, right, is the entire Hong Kong stock market on sale now? What do you think, right? But just based on that video that you've seen in here, right? A lot of people, especially the public, will tend to gravitate to all this, just like the 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 uh, supermarket crowd inside here, because if you look at the market based on the valuation that we've seen so far, right, the the valuation has always been around the twenties, right, twenty and high eighty, and you can see way back in two thousand before the financial crisis, Hong Kong PE price over earning has gone up to thirty five times. Okay, thirty five times, and you can see in here, uh, generally. For many of the U.S. market in here, Asia, uh, excluding Japan stock in here, has been doing very, very well, and this is in accordance to the P. So every time in the, there is a market crash like here, this event here, let me just draw it here. You can see the PE really, really dropped to, right, to the sub 15, sub 15 times in here. So right now, when is whenever it's below the 18 times PE, right, it is deemed to be very very attractive so what is the pe right now you can see the pe on top of me here currently is it is at 17.4 now this is 2020 it went back up to here so we are somewhere around here right still below the 18 points which considered to be a very very good price from the valuation standpoint here so so take note it is not below 10 times okay it's not like the supermarket okay <laughs> i hope you like that video too right now if you like what i've just uh, shared with you in here just uh give me a thumbs up in here so i'll make sure my pace is also good and you're able to follow this now let's look at the earlier sign of the hong kong crackdown that we've seen early on now in uh, early last year or just beginning this year we have the alibaba right which is the chairman of uh jack ma in here but somehow he has uh, relinquished his post and gone to semi retirement and he was very proud of his end uh end pay the ali pay uh uh end financial group in here and it has almost one trillion uh, app, uh uh ali pay app annual active members and the host of statistics they were very very impressive being ali pay av available to 200 countries in here uh credit tag and investment aum of 4.1 trillion all in all, this will very, very good sign. And when Alipay, uh, sorry, uh, the end financial uh, IPO wanted to come up, but it, it did not materialize. It, it was going to be one of the biggest. But towards the last minute, we saw, right, there was a crackdown on it. And there was some regulatory in here. And people who have put in some money in here finally lost it. And like it or not, Jack Ma with his ego being bigger than his life uh, somehow he has been affected in that and since then he has gone missing all right and uh, this famous billionaire john ma uh, jack ma is missing and even right now today he's been very very quiet uh, uh you know uh, not giving the press the the kind of uh, a limelight that he used to be so that was already the early clues that we've seen in the chinese market and how the the chinese government who came in and basically said look you cannot be bigger than me you're making more news you're making a lot of uh, more limelight in here it's time you get back to running the business in here and that's what we have seen so far so since then that has led to another chain of tech event where the next uh, in line was the educational tech crackdown that we saw billions of uh, uh, market cap been wiped down then that was happening uh, somewhere in the oh, uh, some sometime just short of two or three weeks ago and you can see q3 and uh, the market has, and that was uh companies that like tau education uh gao tau tech education new oriental education yao dao zhangmen education so all these are basically offering 
online tuition class to students that is generally very, very active and very, very competitive. Because in China, like it or not, many of the parents are still very kiasu. They want their children to excel in academics, so they send them to tuition, right? Uh, just like in Malaysia too, when I was young, have you sent your children to tuition? Maybe not now, but I think you have, right? Just like me, in those days we're passing our exams and our final exam, right? My days, we will call it SBM. Uh, my parents sent me to tuition because they also want me to do well too. And right, that has been a real trend uh, do, uh, in China where they got a bit more technology doing online, doing week, weekend classes, doing weeknight classes and all this to able to reach to their, to their audience. And that was somehow being broken and this uh, change of series of event in here. Now, according to the guru, Richard Wycoff, this market sell-off that we see inside here, no doubt there's a lot of crackdown, there's a lot of bad news, but what he said was quite to Richard Wycoff. He said that, listen to what the market is saying about others, not about others saying about the market. All right. So what he's saying that you need to look at the chart. What is really happening in here? And so right now, we're going to be applying a little bit of volume spread analysis, but also knowing the underlying tone of the fundamental of this company that we've seen so far in here. I hope that's the format that we're going to be doing in here. So let's take a look at uh, what we have uh, in here. And now Tom Williams being the father of volume spread analysis and time and time again, we always re refer back to the work that we've done. He said traders should always follow the smart money. My take is looking at, at the different angle. Could this be another opportunity for someone some institute to flush down the kind of buying, buying it at very, very cheap prices before pushing it higher. What do you think? Let me know, right? Is this another event of those smart money where volume spread analysis means studying the price volume and could make a difference in your portfolio? Can I partake in this kind of opportunity knowing what price and volume can do? Now, what Tom said is very simple. He just said, all you need to do is follow the footprint. Just like you can see here is a big toe of an elephant. And you see this kind of institution will leave some sort of clue. And we need to look for these clues in the stock market. And that's what it's all about. All our talks, all our smart robbery is to find out whether we have this smart money footprint uh, that we see in here. Now, if you look at the basic VSA volume strength, it's the study of smart money market structure that we've seen. So right at the top in here, uh, where you could go no wrong, this is where what is happening right now in Inari, right? Where you could do no wrong and everything is getting bigger. There's a lot, a lot of optimism with the 5G in here. And that's how they want to uh, get in and parlay a big crowd. So remember when you are a trader, but if you are a trader of VSA, knowledge or method, you will simply know where you are right now here. This is the euphoria. So for the Hong Kong market, where is it right now? What do you think? Definitely not here, right? This is going to be somewhere around here. Sell everything. Who did this to me, right? And then this is what we call the stage four markdown. Okay, this is the stage four markdown. And we have here, this is where the euphoria stage three distribution. Okay, and right now in some way, I do think a little bit, I do see the tech stocks, which we just showed with you just now on our, uh, uh, what do we call, the tech, uh, tech, sorry, the sector analysis, we are seeing a little bit of tapering off in here. It may be a bit soon, but take note of those facts in here. And we are seeing this market in here need, need to go through this, what we call a stage of despair, right? Uh, before eventually it will go back up in here. Now, having said, by looking at the regulatory that we have seen just now, right, the PE, definitely has gone down to about 17 times, which is very, very attractive compared to what we usually see in the past about 20 times for the Hong Kong market. So that presents you, this is really from a fundamental standpoint, it is pretty much a very good discount company in here. All right. So let's take a look at the uh, China crackdown on this business. Not Everyone was affected from Tencent, Alibaba, uh, then also Ali, uh, what else? We, we have other companies like uh, Ta, 
Then we have companies like the uh, Mituan, which is the delivery, and also Didi was impacted for the recent uh, listing in here where they have some privacy issues, which I will talk about later. But the whole point, the two big crackdown was Tencent and Alibaba, which represent one of the biggest, largest cap in the uh, China market and Hong Kong market, India. So let's take a look at the overall uh, market usually how does the stock market goes up so of course you will look at it this hong kong tech market sell-off is it like a pullback that we see in the u.s market now every time when the u.s market can go higher you can see using one dollar of a growth in the stock market market continue to go up and along the many way going back to 1870 i know that's a long time you can see that one dollar become ten thousand dollars okay then one dollar in 1870 right to 2020 it has gone down to ten thousand dollar all right so during that time we have war we have influenza right now we have the last decade we even have the covid right 2020 we have the covid and yet this market continued to go higher so many of you may say, say this look is this a pullback that we see in the normal u.s market sense what do you think let me know type it in there do you see this hong kong market is a way of a pullback or just type it in in there and we'll be doing another exercise too so get ready your calculators in here and we'll be doing and i want you to find out yourself whether these companies that we're going to talk about both alibaba and tencent is worthy of what they are all right so and then if you project the same what we did in us to the hang Seng market this is the hong kong market okay hong kong index and we go back to here is 1990 okay go, this is 2021 and you could see we were in somewhere 2558 and right now we are almost uh, at 25,000. so that is almost 10 times we are gone by 10 times that is almost uh 1000 percent right it's gone up by almost 1000 percent in here so you can see many in many ways there is always what we call this big pullback or market crash and we have another one and right now this is another one so in a longer scale time frame when we are looking back almost uh, 30 years right 1919 to 2020 we have this 30 years time frame so definitely definitely for some it is an opportunity if you are a long-term investor all right if a long-term investor but generally what we have seen so far uh the index lasts longer than the individual company some company just sort of tap out roll out and no longer in the index in here right so i hope you enjoy so far some of my narration about the hong kong market if i am uh let me know all right and let's go on to the next now if you look at the company called tencent in here right now tencent uh in february 2020 it was 775 but it tumbled down 43 percent to 446 you could see here right at the bottom on the 28th of july which is almost about two weeks ago right now he has recovered a bit so a lot of people said look since it has dropped by 43 percent okay 43 percent isn't it like the supermarket just now we saw where people go into the supermarket and grab all the stuff grab all the food that they want right is this what we are seeing right now in here what do you think okay and this has always been the case where people see cheap sale they go in and buy right now so let's also alibaba has fallen by 30 percent you can see that it was around at 273 us dollar okay it has fallen right now to 190 us dollar okay so 190 so that has given a 30 percent discount all right from the old high so we we have to look at the value for what it is so let's examine what we've seen so far is this a time to do bottom fishing or like some of you has avoid to totally now you have seen how i've let down to my reasoning definitely this is actually a part of uh uh, a pullback or a correction that we've seen so far in here so if you want to do bottom fishing definitely you must have the knowledge and the skills and the tools to right at least having a chart will be right but also more important is the coaching and mentoring that what we try to do to our student and this is where you can do the bottom fishing right you want to fish it just right where you can get a fish and not get a shoe <laughs> you know what i mean so this is uh so right now we're going to be evaluating two companies i know there are more companies in here we talk about the uh the um the tech stocks just now like the mituan the dd the xiaomi 
the uh, Tencent, okay, and Alibaba. But we're going to look at the two biggest market in here. And from then onwards, you just need to narrow it down to the right stock and do your pick. If you look at Tencent in here, being one of the biggest company uh, in the Chinese market, they are also in uh, the clouds. They are interactive into gaming. And remember, there was also a comment that the, some of the games, mobile games that was made by Tencent, become very, very addictive, like the what we call spiritual opium where students or players play almost eight hours a day on it and the government wanted to clamp down to it right and then alibaba with his famous uh, what we call the singles day right where they try to sell everything and we know that one of these you know this lazada ah uh, right lazada and shopee they have their 77 they have the 8899 which is the august 8 which is uh, happened three days ago then they probably have a september 99 and the 11 11 so that is all prompting to try to create a lot of sales and they are in the core uh, commercial business okay go back to commercial business they also try to emulate uh, what we do here is like the amazon cloud okay the amazon cloud Okay, so you have another section, Amazon, and they'll be doing a lot of uh, heavy advertising on the social media and that. And then they have the YouTube here, which is the over level in here and uh, Alios and the other initiative they have done in here, right? It's just so huge. Now, if you look at uh, what we have seen so far uh, in terms of Alibaba and Tencent, let's zoom down to Tencent. Now, Tencent uh, has a market cap of 4.6 trillion. That's right. Four point. So they're almost everywhere on our social media. As long as you have a phone with you in here and if you are in the Chinese environment, I'm sure you have a social networking, entertainment, information, software, lifestyle, pretty much what we used to see in the Western world or rest of the world. We have our bro Chrome browser. We have our Gmail. We have a Google map. They have a QQ map. Then we have the flick chart. We have the Netflix. They have their Tencent send pictures right they got the youtube they have their qq or the yuko on alibaba then they have the amazon they have the jd so all these are very very similar in the thing now one thing to take note even with this fall the pe right now for 10 cent is still 23 times compared to facebook and google is 27 and 29 so it just got cheaper by i would say maybe just 10 percent uh compared what we've seen uh so far 10 to 15 percent in here so from what it is so right Right now, if you're longer term just looking at PE, hey, that may be a good uh, no, price to buy, but definitely we want to see more than this one here. So, and let's look at our 10 cent in terms of uh, looking at the total revenue, right? Uh, we want to see whether this company is doing well. You can see there is a very nice trend up here for revenue. So revenue from 2017 to 2020 is still growing during the uh, COVID-19 and we do have a lot of cash flow being generated. Now, a lot of tech companies, it is very, very vital that they continue to generate, okay, generate what we call uh, uh, free cash flows, all right, because they, do, uh, 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 they don't have much of a loan, but that's what they need to generate this cash. And on the net profit margin, which I've talked about here, is the expanding margin or what we call, yeah, expanding margin, or margin growth every time when you see this margin growth here between here to here that's where we see a lot of stock price will definitely goes up and that is always been the sig <coughs> excuse me the signature a lot of stocks that do very well where we see expanding margin in here so let's turn our attention right now to alibaba now alibaba which is also listed on the adr in the u.s market has a capital size of 532 billion with a pe of 24 times so with a PE of 24 times now, if you compare to the nearest neighbor in here is Amazon, that's a 58 times, okay, 58 times. So right now, Alibaba compared to Tencent is the cheaper one in here. And all in all, they have almost 43% in the retail market space, right? And the commerce, it's everything in here. They have the logistic and they're going out to buy even more. Then they also have the Alibaba and the other initiatives, like Ding Talk, which is in smaller scale. But the bulk of the business that generates the revenue, you can see 43% is from the Chinese retail in here. So some of the other sections are still struggling to make it. But with the recent fall that we've seen so far, uh, the comparing to Amazon, the Alibaba, seems to be uh, slightly cheaper almost 50 percent discount here 
So let's take a look also a very similar picture, many of this company here uh, that we've seen here. So as you can see in here, uh, this net income continue to grow in a very nice uptrend. And the same goes for free cash flows, okay? Free cash flows, this one is income. And the last one is what we call margin expansion. Now you, you notice the margin expansion has actually dropped and this is because due to the COVID-19. And that's why uh, we saw this stock prices has dropped a fair bit compared to what we've seen in here. That margin has dropped. Every time when we see that margin drop, you see. So I think that when the economy reopened back, this margin is going to go back to its usual. 20, right now, it's just short of about 21%, but previously, well, about 29%. And that is, if they can go, continue to go up about 25% in here, you see that stock price is going to move up. So watch out also for that margin expansion. That is the closest relationship that we've seen in here. Now, on the uh, stock price that we've seen so far, we're going to be looking at the market here. You can see the market was around here, and uh, since then it has dropped, and that was a drop way back in February, hitting a new high, All right? And we can see this is a still in the continue of what we call a stage four markdown. Okay, a stage four markdown. Now, we want to do right now in terms to see the kind of growth. Now, if we say Tencent and Alibaba will recover and perform well, what we want to do right now is to calculate the net income kage, which stands for cumulative okay, average growth. Right. So we want to arrive to a conclusion right, that the growth rate that we see will comp compensate for the amount that we are seeing. So right now, I'm going to give you this uh, here and I want you to calculate it if you can. Let's do it together. As I said before, this is going to be a very interactive workshop right, compared to the usual one that we do. Okay, make sure you have that one. Okay, the calculator in there and now uh, bring out the calculator. Okay, bring out the calculator here. Say so once you bring out the calculator, I'm just going to go back the last two slides. We're going to calculate for 10 cent. Okay, and uh, one way we can do that right, is to bring up the charts that we see. I'm just going to show you how you can get it for 10 cent. So uh, let's go to Tencent from Trading View. I'm sure you have Trading View. Those of you be, be with me, so go to 700, and once you get that, just move over. You will see this three little bar here, right? And click on that one. Go to Financials. Okay, I'll just repeat here. Move your mouse to when you see Tencent and hover it. You'll see the three dot and click over to Financials. And once you get here, what we want to do is look for income. So income is this one click here and click on this net income so net income will be this here that's right that's the one net income so what you do you can see that net income was 82 okay 82 and this one is 179 so 82 and 179 are the two figures uh, so we have here 82 to 179 okay and it did it in three years. So that is the growth that we've seen. So we want to tally back into our calculator there. Let's do it together. I hope you can do it together with me. Okay, so we put here is 82. And here we put 179. Number of years, what should be the number of years? Okay, what should be the number of years? Follow me together. Number of years is three years. Okay, then you calculate and you can see the 29%. So the Kage, all right. Now here's a little clue. Okay, we, let me just write this down first. So it's 29% here. So Kage is plus 29%. So if this is 29% and in fundamental analysis, that means the price that you're willing to pay is 29 times. That is enough. So just now we saw the PE for 10 cent is how many times? PE is 23 times. So if you look at the uh, yearly growth, if you maintain the right growth that we've seen so far, so 23 times do justify that currently this is 
under value for the uh, 10 cent in here so that's how we want to calculate in here so it does tells you now for most of the tech stock even if you see for inari uh they are still in only about the 10 and 20 percent this 10 cent is huge to be frank with you and the valuation is so much cheaper let's look at the next one that we have right uh here is alibaba okay so let's look at alibaba right now we'll turn our attention to alibaba so turn this off <coughs> and the same thing just click baba b-a-b-a -B -A. do it together with me and you hit here okay do you need me to uh, slow down for you just if you do just type it inside there if you need me to slow down all right it's important that you do this so you get a hang of how to calculate the kage in here all right so just move over to the three dots here that you see and look over the financials right and you want to go to the net income so net income is nine so we can write this down nine nine point six five okay and the net income is twenty two point one seven so twenty twenty two point one seven and that will take about three years so what we do we just plug it in there are you following me so far if you're following me give me a thumbs up okay and we go on to results here so we go to 9.65 going to 22.17 and we type in three years and what do we get okay oh let's try it again 9.9.65 to 22.17 and we have three years let's calculate that again 31 wow that's very very good almost 32 percent there you go right so we have 32 percent for the alibaba all right and 10 cent is how much 10 cent is 29 so 29 and 32 so with that what we can see going back to alibaba right uh which have a pe so we have here 29 percent and okay and 32 percent now remember this on 10 cent is 23 times pe alibaba is 20 uh 20 alibaba pe is how much 24 okay alibaba pe is 24 times 24 times so when this is bigger than this one it's considered to be undervalued a very very simple way to calculate it okay so both stock is undervalued due to the fall that we've seen so far here all right so that also tell you if you compare to the relative uh, uh, stocks that we've seen others uh alibaba definitely is better in here so that's one way we can look but of course now let's turn our attention right now to the technical aspect about the charts in here now remember the market has fallen in here now i'm just going to touch base on the reasons uh, why the the china tech cracked down now like it or not e earlier on this wouldn't be uh, an issue for the western world but here are the five reasons as i've seen in here now uh in the example of alibaba jack Mark personality his company and his personality has gone too big for the communist party that he felt that he is more of a spokesperson for the chinese uh, party and not and that also one of the reason why uh the chinese started to crack down in here and eventually the end ipo was taken off and he stand to lose a lot of money and then on the dd and also 10 10 cent music licensing the privacy law and regulators requirement was not in place where tencent has uh, infringement in here and uh, both uh, uh, Ali Baba was fined 1.2 billion and Tencent was fined also for infringement of the music licensing because they are one of the biggest and dominate the uh, Chinese market in here. And the third, well, a lot of the tech companies are really like slave driver. And you can see one of the uh, what we call governor officer uh, post as a Mituan uh, a food delivery driver. Now remember Mituan is one, it's a bit like Grab in china they, are, they control almost 46 to 50 percent in over major uh, 4000 uh, cities major and small one in here they pretty much control the food delivery business in china and uh, you know there are stories that 
they were very driven towards profit and the people who work for them were really really been uh, uh, sort of side off and they really work like a slave and also the tuition online company like we talk about Tao TAL and uh, educational provider they will really focus on profits and the government said that since you are talking about education then you should be not profit means you are non-profit and that's why we saw the stock price certainly drop so any of the profits that you make you need to give back and that's why this focus on education uh, should be a social non-profit rather than uh, profit driven and lastly is the uh, the continued crackdown within the, chi the US companies as well as the Chinese regulators now a lot of the Chinese company are trying to seek funding and that's why they go over to the foreign exchange like the New York Stock Exchange or the uh, uh, the Nasdaq to seek listing where they can get fresh capital in here as well as on the Hong Kong market so every time when this company they go out and they list their company right shareholders when you buy this share you become a shareholder of the company however the chinese market has very strict rules about foreign investors ownership owning part of the technology so what they did that they created this bypass uh, like an offshore company called VIE, a variable interest entity. Now, this variable interest interest is a bit like what we're very familiar. One MDB and the Cayman Island and offshore, right, where the money siphon there, siphon here, sini puta, sana puta. And in many ways, it's also very complicated. So let's look at what is M. Uh, VIE. So this is a term that you see a lot. Now VIE, like it or not, are legal investment vehicle. They are offshore company where investors do not have a controlling stake. Nonetheless, you have re a controlling interest, which means you're buying a shelf company, but this shelf company actually belongs back to the owner. Now in this example that you see here, right, you are outside of China. In this case, if you are buying a uh, 10 cent to VIE or in Alibaba, in this case, you are basically buying a special purpose vehicle in Cayman Island or in Hong Kong, which actually goes back to the WOHE is wholly uh, ownership foreign entity, right? And this is the original company. Okay, so original company, this is where the nominee shareholders, this is the foreign ownership so basically this is like a special purpose vehicle on top of a special purpose vehicle this is where you and me right if you buy from the u.s market so basically we are not buying in this company here we are buying a shell company over another shelf company. So that's why we talk about VIE. So there's a lot of concern about this. Right now, the US regulator are not very really picky about it, which means if you want to list in US, you can do it to VIE, variable interest entity in here. But we'll, we'll come to a time where the US regulator say, hey, you cannot list VIE, which means you need to list back to the Opcon, the original operating company. But then China do not allow foreign ownership. Uh, of this special company so that's one issue the u.s regularly or listing requiring don't allow or in the chinese part say that look you cannot uh, let your technology that you have whether it's ai or is face recognition some of those technology going to be owned by foreign investor because we are still after all in this case china is a communist country they might ban vie so that is why uh, we've seen the continued discount uh, that we see no doubt just how we found it is under value right and this lower price uh, in terms of their growth of maybe 30 percent target compared to the PE of 25 times is because of the VIE this is something ongoing and with the recent crackdown it has been so-called explore further and this somehow remember this case the Panama Papers right the breakthrough how the rich and powerful hide the money so there's a lot of hidden things that we do not know in this special purpose vehicle uh, used for VIE and the example that we've seen so far in the Panama Papers as well as the 1MDB when you open that can of worm you really do not know what you're buying so having said that Alibaba remain has some sort of element of uh, weaknesses in here so if you're going to be buying Alibaba for longer term you need to take note of this uh, in here small position I suppose is fine but the longer position this maybe seems to be a real problem in here it concerns the VIE 
So let's now turn our attention when to enter. Now my uh, Sifu in here, long time, Tom Williams, I said also my uh, the other Sifu, Bill Wormine, who taught me that the key to market bottoming is knowing when to enter. And understanding uh, in terms of the price and volume dynamics is important. So that's no different from understanding market structure. So from what we took off last uh, Wednesday and Saturday, remember those of you who came uh, on our masterclass preview in here, we talked a lot about the market bottoming in here. Here. So what did Tom say? If you want to buy at market low, okay, when the market is coming down, especially what we see right now, you have to be very cautious. So if you want to buy and if there's still a substantial decline, all right, let's say you want to buy Baba or you want to enter Tencent so far and for a shorter term, you're not going to hold very, very long. So you must ensure that the price will not go down anymore. And if the price were to go down anymore, you need to abort the trade. Now look for the some of the index in here, main, uh, main bank and, and uh, component. So in this case, you'll look at the component of the Chinese market. And after you determine some of the Hong Kong market, the component could not go lower. Then what you want to do is look for uh, what we call, uh, Tom call it the safe zone, right? The safe zone is where we have seen the removal of the sellers, uh, removal of the sellers in here. And that's why uh, once you have removal the, the, of the seller, you are able to do the uh, remove the seller, then you are able to uh, see the market continue to go back higher. Okay, so this is why we want to do this uh, in here. So take note of this. So next, we're going to go on to right. Another market bottoming tips is what we call the safe zone. And this is something that I want to bring from what we uh, left off last Friday, uh, last Saturday to today. And because Hong Kong market now is going through this big sell off that we see. Now using the trade VSA market bottoming pattern, right? You need to know whether we are at the bottom now, no doubt. No, the Hang Seng has fallen almost 15% and we have seen uh, uh, Alibaba has fallen 30%, Tencent fallen by 43%, Tel fallen by 43, uh, 97%. But is this the market bottom? Now, first thing you want to do is look for phase A, which is the high climatic volume, then followed by phase C, A and C in here. Now, all this will be explained more in detail when we talk about it on Friday. So make sure you join me on Friday in our masterclass, right? So having said that, it has to go from phase A to B to C to D and to E, right? So these are the stages of the market when it goes through accumulation. The market may, if, if you're just buying in here, you jump out here, that's fine, okay? You can get out, but the market is not ready to go higher. It need to congest in here. Now, Tom told me the best phase to buy is to look for low volume at phase C, that's right. So let's take a look at the uh, bottoming in here. So right now you could see this market, yeah? having said that, do you wanna buy now? On 10 cent, you can see right now in here. Do you wanna buy right now? We have seen this climatic volume in here, right? And if you look back, we are still at what phase for 10 cent? Yes, no doubt, 10 cent can go back up a bit here, right? But it is not the best. Let's look at Alibaba too. You can see, right, this market continue to go straight down, straight down here, right? Where are we right now? Do you want to buy right now, Alibaba? Again, where is it? Are we here or are we here? What do you think? All right? Type it inside there, all right? Where do you think we are in right now, okay? So it does look like we are still pretty much in early stages of phase A. When will it become, what will it become, all right? Do we see some recovery back then? Now on the case study of TEL, TEL uh, Hong Kong here, we also seen very, very similar picture in here. Market continues straight right down in here, all right? And we have this breakdown here. And again, A, B, or C, what do you think, all right? We're still pretty much in A, isn't it? Correct, and uh, what do you think the direction is? So the direction is likely gonna move sideways for some time in here. Now remember, server dynamics is still pretty much in the sideways. Let's look at Mi Tuan also, all right? The market has broken down, and, and right now, this one is better. You can see this one in here, we probably have already a climatic volume here. You can see that, right? So this is, could be an A, B, but we haven't seen the low volume yet. You can see the low volume, low volume. 
Well, phase C. Have you seen the low volume phase C yet? Now, unlike Mi Tuan really sort of moved to beyond phase B and phase C. So these are the kind of practice that you must constantly do and something again we address a lot in our mentoring and coaching program in here. All right. Now, of course, there are better shares than what we've seen right now. And definitely this weekend, I'm going to share with you in our three-day workshop how to use the fishing bait. That's right. How to use the fishing bait. So make sure you catch me. And uh, we still have a couple of seats left for August 13. And if you're really interested, do uh, uh, contact the number uh, 010-266-9761 for more info in here. Now, if you are considering the longer term of the Chinese company, all right, these are the few things that we will talk about. Now, remember, the political structure that you see in Western capital and China communists is very different. The Chinese, all right, like it and now somehow they have switched over to become more social they want to take care of the welfare of the people but from the west if you cannot perform they will fire you you can see the different political structure in here and an, an item number two right now they are talking about balancing a uh, social organization work versus economic growth and in the case of me where they work 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 many of the delivery boy uh, even same thing uh, in in malaysia the grab food uh, where many of the restaurant owner and the grab food driver are saying look right now grab food seems to be taking the major share of the profit which is about 30 percent nothing left for the restaurant owner and nothing left for the uh for the grab driver in here where is the part where you want to do the social balancing now the chinese government in this case the uh, communist party presidency realized that and they quickly want to go in and do the rebalancing and then the third one is guided by confusion principle versus kiasu mentality now the path that where China is going, being able to grow year in, year out, and previously they have a one-child policy, but that has switched to a three-child or two-child, depending which time frame you're looking at. So they're trying to move away from the Kiasu mentality, where each and their love and hearted one want always to be number one. So right now they want to go by Confucius, means you want to be obeying the more authority, which means you want to listen to the fatherly figure rather than thinking for yourself in this case more for the kiasu so they want to focus back on the confucianism principle was the idea in that and then finally the fourth insight there this is my take is that no doubt i think there will be recovery at the end of the year because communist party helped develop some of these tech company like tencent alibaba mituan uh quite Kuai Tao, uh, Ping, du, Ping Dao Dao. So all these companies are developed by them. So I do think they are unwilling to destroy them at all. These are just more like you've been naughty, you've been warned. So if you go back and look back at the overall market that we've seen for the Hang Seng going back to 1990, this is this market is, in my opinion, is a pullback. All right, but you need to have the right. So use the technical indicators that I just shared with you, the market bottoming, the green pentagon in here, the markdown, the up trust, and all these are available to you as a resource. Use them to your advantage. Okay, so some guideline about share to move higher, just to sum up what we have talked about in here. After the sell down, allow sufficient period for the share to accumulate. Now, notice the difference between 10 cent and uh, Alibaba versus Mituan, right? And then look for sign of strength, right? And then when the sign of strength is there, the volume will come back because of removal of the sellers in here. Then you will meet the safety zone. When you meet the safety zone, that means there are no more seller. The market is likely to go higher rather than lower there, all right? All right, and then finally, if this you done, you will catch this nice big fish that we are all looking for and that's what is all about bottom fishing you don't want to go in and put your bait and then go deeper and deeper and get stuck with it because right now the u.s market is moving so it's important that you you use and utilize your fund very very well and think about some of the stocks that you have from the rubber glove are you still there are you not willing uh, to recover back the lost money that you have by moving to the right sector Think about that, that is lost opportunity. Many of us not willing to let go of our period loss, we miss many, many opportunities. And right now, this weekend, 
definitely a chance for you to invest your time and money and guided by us and you catch that big fish and this is what is all mentoring all is all about you can see life is more efficient when you're the right mentor and the right guidance like many of our audience and even last uh, Saturday one of our graduates came out and share how our mentor and coaching has changed their life in here which all many do so meanwhile invest in knowledge and training you have the disposal of all our pentagons and our smart roby and uh, trade basic as well as the tools that you see in our dashboard if you don't have it why not invest your time and money in in there all right and of course we are starting uh, for those of you who have registered and uh, are coming on Friday night. Then great. I congratulate you. I can't wait to share with you more things that we have done uh, on, on the course in here. Right. And we're having many Zoom sessions. I think finally the the whole coaches and myself and in here, what we're trying to do is try to explore where you are. And a lot of time we are very conscious of where we are. What are our super ego and what is our I some of those unconscious things that prevents us from really becoming the better person that we are. And that's what we wanted to do. Not just focusing on the tools, but really look into deep where you are. So to discover that you probably have the right tools, the right mental and the right stuff to become successful. I think that's all we wanted, isn't it? The right stuff, the, don't you think it's a good time to invest some time in it to discover what is your ego and how you can improve and let us help you in our 12 months mentorship that what we do in here. And of course, our tool, our growth screener continue to be there. Right? And also the US markets as seen before, that will definitely help you to move forward in here and a lot of people are saying great things about our courses in here and really at the end of what tom said right, to become an efficient of the market you really need to understand the market so you're able to know the language and we come to the conclusion of our hong kong market in here so i hope you like what we've seen so far and uh, do go over to our google store and uh, review us for the information that we share with you. You have a lot of tools to your disposal in here. All right. And I'll be happy to take some questions. Right. And uh, overall, I've given you a perspective of the market. All right. And if you're interested in any of our courses, whatever, there's a number up there. You can start, uh, ask her for more information in here. So do let us know. And uh, I'm just here going to be taking some more questions in here so everything is crystal clear you know where to put your money i'm sure you do okay if you don't that's a number you can always text us inside here so if there's no more question in here i want to say good night thank you for your time spent with us for the last one hour and so and i hope i can get back to you with more challenging and interesting topics to share with you in here so you can grow your knowledge and spend your time over there. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.